And so you return. Lovely Morrigan has at last found someone willing to dance to her tune. Such enchanting music she plays, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Which one, I wonder? What has Morrigan told you? Hmm? What little plan has she hatched this time? That she does. The question is, do you? Ah, but it is an old, old story. One that Flemeth has heard before, and even told. Let us skip right to the ending, shall we? Do you slay the old wretch as Morrigan bids, or does the tale take a different turn? It is a dance poor Flemeth knows well. Let us see if she remembers the steps. Come, she will earn what she takes. I'd have it no other way.
I shall do it. You're awake. Did you... Did you feel it too? It was like the Archdemon saw us. Saw us! What does that mean? I think... Wait. Did you hear that? It's like Duncan once said, we can sense them and they can sense us. We'd best be more careful from now on. This camp isn't safe any longer. <laughs> what will they send next? Darkspawn tax collectors? Fortification should be built around the camp. How unnerving. It will be more difficult to sleep here now. What, no trap? No ambush? <laughs> Some assassins. It is dark. Let us move on. What's on your mind? I will answer to the best of my ability. What's on your mind? I have watched you for a time, and perhaps I was wrong. There seems to be something special between the two of you. He seems less guarded when in your company, allows himself to relax, and he seems genuinely happy. I think I was too harsh in my judgment before, and I am sorry. What you have may not last forever. Death and duty may part you, but love's worthiness is not diminished because of that. I should have seen this before. Instead, you learn to cherish every precious moment that you spend together, knowing that it may be the last. And for those of us watching, well, it brings warmth to these old bones to know that something so beautiful can be found in the midst of chaos and strife. What's on your mind? It is no trouble. I await your command. Yes. 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 Indeed. One world, one life, one death. It's strange that matters can be so tumultuous and yet the day still be so bright. 
Oh, my pardon. Just thinking aloud. Are you here for the Chanter's board? I am Sister Justine, curator of the reliquary of this Chantry. <laughs> and pride again. It is hard to live up to the example of Andraste. The archivist tends the books and I tend the sacred relics. I also search for more to add to our collection, which is more difficult than it sounds. Really? Oh, pardon my incredulity. I would like to examine them in any event. Let me see. The scrolls are old, no question, and the script. It's written in cipher. Early believers used them to keep their writings safe from the De Winter Magus. These could be authentic. Please, let me examine it. If you are a charlatan, may the Maker have mercy upon you. There is avarice in your eyes, but I believe you. In a ruins, you say? I can give you five sovereigns. If these prove to be genuine, we can discuss more substantial payment afterwards. I need parchment, quill and ink. What was the trick to the cipher again? Ah. I examined your scrolls. I know a few of the early Tantry ciphers, but I'm not fully familiar with this one. The bits I have made out. This may be an account of Maferat's final days, and perhaps more. I know, it's remarkable. The same Maferat who betrayed our prophet and saw her burn alive in Minrath Rus. If we could get a real translation, well, it could be the find of our lifetime. Could take months. The ciphers were designed to be difficult for the magisters to decrypt. Who knows what secrets we can uncover, what truths we can find. Here is all of the allowance I have for acquisitions. Take it and go. A thousand, thousand blessings. Oh, no mention of dessert. Surely this is a miracle. Ma Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him. The Mage's Collective thanks you. Make us smile upon you. Hello there, Warden. I'm a friend. I've heard you're putting up the good fight against Loghain and Hal, right? Good for you. Make us spit on all those arrogant noble bastards. I've also heard you have certain skills. Skills of the street, you might say. No judgments here, mate. I want to help you. The name is Slim Cauldry, and if you've heard of me, I've been doing a sad job of it, haven't I? I hear a great many things, and for those who have used certain pesky laws as mere nuisances, there's some ripe fruit to be plucked out there. I can point the way. All I ask is for a little slice for myself. Well, one of my mates noticed your skills. Nice piece of work, that uncommon calibre, if you don't mind me saying. But I need to know what else you can do. Ever done bump and grabs? Do much blending in shadows? Different opportunities for different folk, you know. Ooh, you're multi-talented, are you? Don't get much of that in these parts. Since the guard will hang or skewer you if you get caught, it makes advancement dicey. Now that we have that settled, just ask away. One point. I don't like blood much. Call me old-fashioned, but the Maker says thou shalt not strangle, decapitate or whatnot unless the other fella really had it coming, eh? I realize sometimes you do what you have to, but restraint, right? So, what are you interested in? I've got one. Should be easy pickings. Fifty silver. A lady's maid is in the marketplace. She's wearing bright green. Should be easy to spot. She's got a purse with some of her mistress's ill-gotten gems. Just relieve her of her purse, and then we both come out ahead. Good luck, Warden.
You're back, eh? One lady's maid groped and pilfered. At least that's how I'd like to imagine it happened. You want something else? I got one. Better than the last. One sovereign. I thought you might like this one. Sir Nancy has a fancy and expensive sword. Paid for courtesy of her oppressive taxes on her lands. She's going to be at the wonders of Thedas soon, no doubt figuring new ways to kick her peasants where it hurts. This swipe will be tougher. She's got good eyes, and stealing a sword from a scabbard isn't easy. If you can blend in shadows, that might help. Good hunting to you, Warden. Dwarven crafts. Find dwarven crafts. Miserable. He's begun. Ah, <laughs> oh, a peasant. <laughs> How delightful. What? What are you going on about? Get away, you filthy commoner. I, I won't be scared by you. I won't take the blame for this one. This was... I right. shall do it. I ain't sticking around to see how this... Is begun. My client appreciates your generosity. You're back, eh? Once Sir Nancy realizes she's robbed, I bet she'll be furious. Truly well done. You have time for another? I'm glad you asked. It'll cost you three sovereigns. We're not stealing from Alas this time. We're stealing from Ban Darby. Master Tilva, the Ban silversmith, has been on holiday for the past couple of weeks, but he's in town for the day. All of his valuable, expensive goods are locked up tight, but he has the key. He's got two guards with him, not the cheap kind either. If you can get by them, you should be good. Luck to you, Warden. be done. What is it? I have work to do. What does it say? Ah, I knew this would happen. Just when I was starting to get good. Well, thanks, I guess. Your wish? I am ready.
Dwarven crafts. Fine Dwarven crafts. Direct from Orzammar. You won't find better. Sorry, the alley's occupied. I, um... Uh, of course. Uh, glad to see you again. Uh... Oh, definitely. Ban Darby does throw the best parties. Uh, but you see, this isn't an opportune time. Uh... That makes two of us. But I am very busy. Perhaps we could catch up later? As long as the master wants, we get paid. I've had enough of you. You're back, eh? No luck yet, eh? Keep trying. You already got one. One noble ass at a... Right you are. I've had enough of you. Enough of you now. As there is but one more, one life. So much to one do. Dwarven crafts. Fine dwarven crafts. Direct from Orzammar. What can I get you, stranger? Enough of you. Now beat it. All men are the work of our maker's hand. It is begun.
Once the Drydens were strong, we will be again one day. It shall be done. I think I owe you an explanation for what happened earlier. You should know that something happened to me at the tower before you came along. You spoke to Petra, did you not? She told you I saved her from a demon. I did, but I did not survive that encounter. Let me explain fully. I engaged a very powerful demon to rescue Petra. It sapped me of all my energy and will and left me drained. It took everything I had to defeat it. And when I was done, I no longer had the strength to keep my heart beating. I remember my life ebbing away. Everything receded from me. Sound, light. I remember being enveloped in complete, impenetrable darkness. And then I sensed a presence enfolding me and cradling me, whispering quietly to me. The sensation is impossible to describe. I was being held back firmly but gently as a mother would a child eager to slip from her grasp. I felt life and warmth flowing through my veins again. I began to be aware of small sounds and the discomfort of my hip pressing into the cold stone of the tower floor. The Fade contained spirits both benevolent and malicious. The benevolent spirits seldom make themselves known because they want nothing from mortals, unlike the demons. It was one of these spirits that saved me. Without it, I would be dead. And it has not left me. It is with me, even now, bonded to me. You see, I am supposed to be dead. It is the spirit that is keeping me in this world. And this is not the way of things. Perhaps the spirit did not expect this, but it is weakening gradually. I am living on borrowed time. Yes, that we will. Yes. Yes, indeed.
spirit that sustains me so that it could lend us aid. I did not realize it would take this much out of me. It seemed a good idea at the time, if a little rash. I think it may have weakened the spirit a little. Well, um, that's certainly conceivable. I suppose I shouldn't be using that particular trick to entertain children at parties. I promise I'll be careful. And thank you. Your concern is touching. I shall do it.
What's on your mind? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams because I knew they were there. I could sense the demons, too, and their presence frightened me. It was the kindly spirits of the Fade that took the fear from me. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. I suppose they must. It is these benevolent spirits that create our dream worlds in the Fade. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting, but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me, and was guarding me, for want of a better word. There were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. I don't know why I was chosen. Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance, and I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden and help prepare her for the task that is yet before her. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. You know, I think you'll be all right, even without my help. What's on your mind? I will answer to the best of my ability. What's on your mind? Cure me? What, am I sick now? Even you know that you cannot cure the dead. And I'm not the only one dying. You are too. <laughs> I'm just more efficient about it. Ah, child, your concern is heartwarming, but death comes to everyone, and it is not something to fear. People fear not death, but having life taken from them. Many waste the life given to them, occupying themselves with things that do not matter. When the end comes, they say they did not have time enough to spend with loved ones, to fulfill dreams, to go on adventures they only talked about. But why should you fear death if you are happy with the life you have led? If you can look back on everything and say, yes, I am content, it is enough. I think I've led a good life, a full life, and I for one am not afraid of death, whatever it may bring. They say that when you die, your spirit travels through the fade and returns to the maker. And after that, we'll see, won't we? What's on your mind? I try not to dwell too much on the mistakes of my past, of which there are many. I would go quite mad if I did that. But I do have one regret. The greatest misstep of my life. Made even more grave because it had dire consequences for someone else. Years ago, I was assigned as mentor to a lad, Anaren. He was my first apprentice. Anaren was an elf, 
raised in one of the elven alienages, and he was very mistrustful of humans, especially humans in authority. I was his mentor, an authority figure. He can't have liked me very much. What Anaren needed was time. Time to get used to his new home. Time to emerge from his shell so we could build a rapport. I gave him no such time. I was young and arrogant. He is a mage, I thought. He needs to grow up and act like one. I expected too much from him, too quickly. I gave no consideration to his origin or his feelings, and he retreated further from me. All I could think of was how stubborn he was, how he was throwing away all his talent and his potential just to be difficult. Oh, I dread to think. I was a harsh task mistress. He might have thought I was a demon in disguise. You cannot plant crops in the cold, wintry ground. You cannot teach a student who is closed off and unresponsive. Patience is what is needed. And I learned that too late to help him. Anaren ran away from the circle one night. I had berated him over some trivial, ridiculous matter that I no longer remember. I drove him away because of something utterly unimportant. He was a child, 14 at the time of his leaving. They had his phylactery, and they hunted him down. They called him Maleficar, a mage who practices forbidden magic, deserving of death. He was a child, misunderstood and lost. I begged the Templars to tell me if he suffered, if they gave him a quick death. I got no answers from them. I was his mentor, and they wouldn't even tell me what became of him. I should have known better. I had the best mentors. They were kind, compassionate. Why didn't I learn from them? I failed an error. All I had to do was listen to him. He would try to talk to me, and I would tell him to concentrate on his spells. He talked about the alienage sometimes, and the Dalish. He always talked about looking for the Dalish elves. The Templars are well trained and thorough. That he still lives, it would be a vain hope. The apprentices that came after Anaren benefited greatly from the lessons I learned from him. In a sense, he was my teacher, and I his student. And there it is. My story, my one greatest regret. Wait your command. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> now I have time to find some way to prevent Flemeth from stealing my body in the future, even without her grimoire. For she will be back. One day, I have no doubt of that. And if I cannot protect myself, one day I will track her down again in whatever body she inhabits, and she will die again and again if need be. But there is no need to think of such things now. I have you to thank for saving me, so let us return to the task of dealing with the Darkspawn, no? You... Too much could happen in days to come to make such promises, yet I am grateful. Let us go. There is much to be done before... There is still much to be done. I await your command. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Possibly, if I had the desire to. I do not. Are you sure I can't it?
Enchantment? He... It's a process. Enchant... And there you have it. Enchant... Yes. 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 Horse Fashion. Indeed. Yes. You want?
shall be done. Are we descending into the underground? The thought of so much rock over one's head is disquieting. Step right, make us breath. Oh, beg your pardon, friend, you uh, startled me a bit. Can, can what? I'm sorry, I, uh, I don't know what that... Where is my sword? I, uh, I don't know what you mean, sir. I don't have it. I swear by Andraste's knickers. I sold it on the way here. A dwarf near Redcliffe. Dwin, I think his name was. He's the one who has the sword, I promise you. Said he was a collector. We'll see. I've told you what I can, I swear to. Oh, uh... I'll do it. 